The image you see on your screen is called the plasma moon map or the mirror moon map. It is based on a theory put forward by the Greek researcher Sturgios, who runs a YouTube channel called Vibes of Cosmos, particularly the moon map of the Earth. The theory is that the moon is a mirror that reflects the Earth. It outlines the continents that we know. But beyond that, we also see hidden unknown continents. If the prospect of hidden continents doesn't bring out the adventurer in you, I don't know what does. Maybe most of you know about this map. I did not get this map because I believe it. I got it to explore. Once I've learned more, I'll either discard the idea or support it. Regardless of whether it turns out to be true, it's important we get away from the idea of already knowing all there is to know. The map appeals to me because it triggers my love for discovery. I also like it because it would help explain lifelong flight path anomalies I've experienced. If this map is true, Africa and Australia are bigger than commonly shown, and the Americas are much smaller. The continents are not beside each other, but in a circle around a central North Pole. We also see an unknown continent in the South Pacific, labeled Lemuria, and another one to the west of Africa, not far from the Cape Verde Islands, labeled Atlantis. I first noted how common flight paths would make more sense with these alternative maps. It would explain why my dozen flights from New Zealand to California did not go east as they should have according to normal maps, but west, with a stopover in Sydney. Every time this happened, I was puzzled, saying, Los Angeles is supposed to be in the opposite direction. But looking at these alternative maps, it's the exactly right direction. Nor did I ever get a direct flight from New Zealand to South America. Using a conventional map, I didn't see why it would be a problem. Every flight from New Zealand to any South American destination first goes to Los Angeles. Even if I wanted to go to Mexico, I first had to fly to Los Angeles. But, if the mirror moon map is correct, it makes perfect sense, Los Angeles would be much closer than South America. Others have obviously had similar questions. This is North and South America, as allegedly mirrored in the moon. Could the Americas really be this small compared to Africa? It's possible. I've driven from the US east to west coast in just a few days, with sleeping breaks. I've also driven in Africa where a few days didn't even get me to the borders of one country. Here's a close-up of Asia, Australia, New Zealand, and Lemuria. I recall trying to get a direct flight from New Zealand to Hawaii numerous times, but there were none, even though they are both supposed to be close to each other. Later, I learned there are no flights traversing the South Pacific. I'm skeptical of the map because it's improbable that one could hide such big continents. It borders Japan and Siberia. You'd think that some captain of a vessel or plane would have spotted it by now. Too many people would have to be involved in the cover-up. On the other hand, belief is a powerful filter. If you don't believe there are hidden continents, you don't look for any. Moreover, most people never really get the chance to have a close look around. The age of free pioneering exploration ended after extremely rigid border and travel restrictions were put in place in the last 100 years. And the few people who do travel to far-off places are usually funneled to predefined tourist attractions. Deviations from the tourist trail are unwelcome in many parts. What is called Atlantis on this map should also be fairly easy to prove because it's so close to Africa. Anyone flying east from Dakar or Cape Verde should soon see the unknown land. I found zero references to the existence of these lands, no whistleblowers, no legends, no sailor stories. On the other hand, there are places void of flight traffic. Those could be good places to hide continents. Maybe it's just a coincidence that there is a flight traffic gap precisely where the mirror map says we'll find Lemuria and Atlantis. Perhaps Atlantis and Lemuria have in fact sunk in, just like the ancient said. Then, perhaps, the moon is not showing a reflection of Earth as it is now, but as it was before the cataclysm. Then it's not a mirror moon, but an old photo moon. If these features are in fact outlined on the moon, I'm even skeptical on that, because you can read a lot into natural features. My intuitive sense is that the continents labeled Lemuria and Atlantis are not there, at least not anymore. I've done some muscle testing on the subject and got no answer confirming the landmasses exist today. But, if there is anyone living in the vicinity of those areas who can tell otherwise, I don't mind being proven wrong. This photo is from the official White House website, photographed by Cecil Staunton on October 19, 1963. It shows John F. Kennedy using an anomalous map. It also appears to be North Pole-centric. 
In it, Africa is also much bigger than the Americas. And there is entirely unknown land on the left side of the map. It's not Antarctica, that's already shown below South America. It's too big and distorted to be Australia. So, what is it? A hidden continent maybe. The map doesn't show America north of Africa, but beside it. It also doesn't show Lemuria or Atlantis. But, it does show some strange unknown land to the west of the Americas. This is a direct comparison of the same area on both maps. Someone I showed the map to, argue that this is unknown landmasses Asia. But Asia is already shown on the upper right of the map. There are also ancient maps that follow the circular North Pole-centric model. I've discussed map from the 1500s previously. Notice how here, Australia, New Zealand and perhaps Lemuria are all part of one larger landmass. Have cataclysmic events moved things around? Maps like this confirm the possibility of hidden continents. It's also worth noting that international organizations use a North Pole-centric map. Notice again how far away Australia is from South America. Here's the problem. It is claimed that most flight traffic goes across the European and American Arctic because the distances are smaller. And the distances are smaller because the Earth is a globe that's fat in the middle and thinner at the top and bottom. I understand the concept. But then, that would mean there would also be massive flight traffic in, in the Southern Hemisphere. But there is next to none. Even planes in the southern continents first fly north before they cross the ocean. Where are the flights in the South Pacific, South Atlantic and Indian Ocean? A friend of mine recalled a time he was in Cape Town and needed to get to Perth, Australia on urgent business. He couldn't find any direct flights to Perth, even though on a conventional map the two locations look fairly close. The only way to Perth was to first fly to Dubai or Doha and then from there to Australia. On this normal map, a flight from Cape Town to Dubai, and then to Perth, is a very big diversion. But on the moon map, not so much. A direct flight to Perth versus a stopover in Dubai, looks like approximately the same distance. The stopover is probably preferred because it allows for refueling. Regarding the flight paths, there are only two explanations that make sense to me. Either the Earth is flat as a pancake, or, it's a globe, but much bigger than we know, including vast hidden realms, and even the continents we know located differently than we think. The official explanation is, that planes don't fly routes where there are no refueling options. That's a falsehood I've addressed previously. One objection to all of this, may be, that NASA has given us so many photos of Earth, we know what it looks like, end of story. But, have they in fact given us pictures of Earth? Would you be surprised to learn otherwise? Here it is explained that the images you see of Earth are composite renderings from many different satellite photos, apparently. It is said that the satellites are too low in orbit to capture the whole Earth. Because NASA's Earth is pieced together in Photoshop, it looks different from decade to decade. Before publishing this video, I hopped over to FlightRadar24.com and took a snapshot of current North Pole activity. The screenshot was taken at 11.40 Eastern Standard Time. The red marked plane, as well as those right below it, all come from Dubai or Doha in the Middle East, and are all flying to the US. The red marked one is flying to Seattle. Why are they crossing the North Pole or Northwestern Canada to reach the US? If we look at the globe as it supposedly is, it doesn't look like any advantage is gained. But if we look at the alternative map, if you fly from the Gulf region to Seattle, going across northwestern Canada is the most direct route. And once again, for comparison, this is the 1892 Gleason map. The Gleason map is similar to the one President Kennedy used. It is like something in between the plasma moon map and the official modern map. If you find these musings too much of a stretch and say it's unlikely secret continents would be withheld from us, consider that it's already happened in history. I've previously presented evidence that the Sumerians reached South America, the Phoenicians and Romans reached North America, and the Vikings and ancient Germans reached the Americas. There's even evidence that the Venetians traveled to Lake Erie and Lake Michigan before Columbus ever set foot on a ship. Meanwhile they were showing the public maps that showed only Europe and the Middle East, reaching no further than Northern Africa and Western Asia. Why would they do this? Possibly to keep the resources and land to themselves. Then, after a phase of reawakening, once the cover-up was no longer realistically sustainable, people were allowed to discover the new unknown lands. The message here, in no uncertain terms, 
Even if the alternative maps turn out to be false, we need many more people willing to take risks with out-of-the-box thinking. The current paradigm that says we already know everything and now merely need to fill in the details, not only runs counter to any learning or real advancement, but is also proven wrong every time something brand new is discovered. Many wonderful revelations lie ahead for the open-minded. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.